Hey there, it's Kristen, and this is part four of the 60, 64 hexagrams challenge. So I'm going to be working with hexagrams 25 through 32. And with 25, we have heaven over thunder. And I use the keyword innocence for this one. This one means like without recklessness, without disorder, it means there's no error. And so if you look at the trigram thunder, trigram thunder is all about recklessness and disorder, but it's moving up through where it's contained within heaven and heaven is supreme order. So I think that combination kind of is, it's kind of like saying, even if this is energy is impulsive, it is balanced by heaven. I'm, I'm referencing in this image um, that this hexagram also represents the season of Imolk, which um, relates to the, uh, like the very beginning of February, which is a time where um, the sheep are being, beginning to lactate and preparing to give birth to lambs. So the sheep are one symbol for that season. And this is also the spark of spring. And so that's why I have like kind of the sun, the haziness, like the sun. So it's like a promise of spring coming. If we take heaven over thunder and we turn it upside down, we get mountain over heaven. And this is hexagram 26, great accumulation. And this one has a partner card. Um, we saw it in hexagram nine with small accumulation. These two are sometimes called, I've seen them called big cattle and, and uh, small cattle because uh, these energies can relate to wealth and, um, and of course cattle are one sign or symbol of wealth. So with this one, we have mountain over heaven and we can imagine mountain like a, a mountain or a cavern and heaven represents supreme value. So like a mountain that's full of treasure. So if you're just kind of looking at this through the image of it, you could see um, an image of a cavern full of, of treasure that has been cultivated through discipline um, and prudence. And so we get this sense of wealth. And the way that I depicted this one is the small accumulation, I just have two cows. And then great accumulation, it's an entire herd of cattle. So next for hexagram 27, we have nourishment. And we have mountain over thunder. This one, I think the way that it makes the most sense is just to look at the image from the lines. So if you look at the top line and the bottom line, these represent lips. And then the yin lines in between would be like an open space. So if you look at it like that, it's kind of like a mouth. And so um, the ideogram for this is an open mouth because that's kind of what we're seeing here. And this is really about nourishment, not only for the body, but for the soul. And when nourishment is proper, then good fortune results. This is um, one of these where we don't turn it upside down to get the, um, the next hexagram, we invert. So we would take every yang line and it turns yin and all of the yin lines turn yang. And we get lake over wind. And this one is called excess. And with this one, what we see is we have yin lines on the top and the bottom. So yin energy is weak. You can think of it literally as something that's not heavy or not solid. It's, it's physically weak. And so we have all of these kind of heavier lines, these yang lines in between. So we have a situation um, of something that is like a pillar that's weakening on the each end of it. And so that's really where the excess is, like something is too heavy and the weight of it is just too heavy. So I depicted it like a, a house that's uh, it's kind of falling apart. 
with um, with this one, we can also look at it in terms of signifying uh, being flexible on the inside because we have wind here and then finding pleasure and satisfaction on the outside. So it's really also showing you flexibility coupled with satisfaction. So I'm going to move these out and put in the next four. We've got 29, 30, 31, and 32. So first of all, we're going to start here with 29, which is the pit. And you can see that it is water over water. Water in um, the I Ching as a trigram, the trigram of water, represents danger. So, you know, in some systems, water might be just emotions or going with the flow. Um, but when we look at it through the lens of the I Ching, we see water is as danger and essentially this is like double danger or or a pit um, so it can mean a pit a chasm a gorge um, is basically a critical time now one of the things that I it occurred to me reading the pit um, another name for it is the abyss there is a an acupoint it's lung nine which is called great abyss and so in disharmony, that point relates to loneliness, self-isolation, depression, and a vacancy in the heart. So I think I tried to kind of depict that energy in this card. And really with this hexagram, it's saying like if you follow what you feel in your heart, you'll succeed. So basically kind of trying to get out of that pit. Now, if we um, do an inversion again, just like we just did, we take all of the yin lines and turn them yang and reverse. Now we have fire over fire. And so the ideogram for this one, the clinging, because fire, the, the trigram for fire is said to have the characteristics of clinging, that fire clings. And the ideogram is a magical bird with brilliant plumage. And so for me, it makes sense to use like a phoenix or that type of energy. So that was what I was trying to convey here. And there is this sense of uh, brightness or brilliance. And this hexagram can relate to um, like shining your light. It can also relate to like an intelligent or an enlightened person. For the next one, we have... Uh, 31 courtship we have lake over mountain and the way that um, that this one is seen I've seen it as like a planetary conjunction which is interesting but also maybe an idiom of a broken piece of pottery where the two halves are joined together so it really means like influence wooing uh, joining together reciprocity and the way that I'm kind of looking at it in terms of my deck here, actually, I've got another one that I'm going to trade out for this one, um, is the image of, we've got lake over mountain. Lake is the youngest daughter. Mountain is the youngest son. So it's, it's really representing a union between the, between, um, the genders, essentially, 
and in a larger sense with human fellowship. But we have basically like a young couple, which I've kind of depicted in this in this card. Now, if we take this energy and we um, flip it again, we turn it upside down, then we get thunder over wind. And in this case, instead of being like the youngest children, we have the eldest children here. So the eldest son and the eldest daughter. And this one, I'm actually going to replace this image um, with a couple that's in a boat because I already have a bunch of boat images and I want to see if there's a, a way to replace them. But in this case, what we're looking at is the uh, hexagram 32 is constancy. Uh, it's said to be the, that the ideogram is a heart and a boat between two shores, which is about enduring the voyage of life, which I think I, you know, that was what I was depicting with this one. So this hexagram relates to duration, persistence, endurance, steadiness, and continuity. Um, when we look at it through the lens of a relationship, um, eldest son and eldest daughter, it is signifying a couple that has attained like a stable, happy relationship. So basically kind of like an older couple that's been together for a while that has uh, a more enduring relationship. So uh, like I said, I'll be trading this card out for another card that I've made with a different image. And that's kind of what I'm doing. I have most of the cards made, but I'm making adjustments as I go along, as I kind of learn a little bit more about each, uh, like go a little bit more in depth in terms of what each hexagram means as a whole. And also together, because I like to see what is the contrast between these pairs. There's an opposing pair uh, with every odd and even one. So I think this kind of makes a better pairing uh, looking at like the courtship period with a young couple versus um, a period of longevity with an older couple. So that's where I am right now and I will be back with part five.